Welcome to Uncommon Sense, where we do our best to make it common again. I'm your host, Adrian Alquist. Today I'm joined by Dale Alquist. How are you? The better for your asking, Adrian. Thank you. Happy Independence Day, everyone. I hope you all had a good Independence Day, because this is going to be coming out afterwards. Uh, We're going to keep it short and sweet, because you should be enjoying a 4th of July vacation. Uh, But we're going to talk about it, and we're going to talk about what Chesterton has to say about the Declaration of Independence and maybe the American Revolution. And I'm going to tell you about the conference, because if everyone hasn't signed up yet, I have to tell you. Um, (laughs) So, chesterton.org slash conference. Uh, You can go there to sign up for the 40th Annual Chesterton Conference, and this is coming up very quickly. It's at the end of the month, July 29th to 31st. It's at the Sheraton Lyle Naperville Hotel. And uh, Seth Dillon, the president of the Babylon Bee, is going to be speaking at our conference. And um, so you don't want to miss it. It's going to be very entertaining and just awesome, right? Awesome. Awesome. We, we should uh, we should mention the conference before we talk about the 4th of July. <laughs> All right. And we have. So right. now, what does Chesterton have to say? About the conference or about <laughs> the 4th of July? Um, let's start with the 4th. Do you know what date the Declaration of Independence was signed on? <laughs> Is it the 4th? <laughs> yep. 4th of July, 17. 17- 76. Oh, yeah, the date. I guess I should have said that. But By yes, I did thing, know you know, that the, the month, seven... <laughs> date, yes. year. One of Chester's great lines is from his book, What I Saw in America, which, of course, he wrote uh, right after he visited America 100 years ago, exactly 100 years ago in 1921. But he wrote a book when he got back to England after saying that he was not going to write a book about his trip to America. But he did. <laughs> He couldn't resist. Too much material. (laughs) And in that book, I think one of the most famous lines from that book is, America is the only nation in the world that is founded on a creed. The creed is set forth with dogmatic and even theological lucidity in the Declaration of Independence. And it, by inference, condemns atheism, since it clearly names the Creator as the ultimate authority from whom these equal rights are derived. Think about it. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's a creed. That's a creed. And, uh, and Chesterton says, it's the only nation in the world founded on a creed. Yeah, and that's that's the reason why we can... Um, we can now nowadays say, hey, everyone should be treated equally and stuff. A lot of people take that for granted and say, oh, it's obvious. Well, uh, it wasn't always obvious. And it took uh, the founding fathers and and Christians to actually um, to, to say it. And these are that these are actual human rights. And yeah, I, I talked to Joseph Pierce about this on the podcast and and he completely agrees. Yeah. He's an Englishman, that Joseph Pierce. <laughs> yeah. He, he's the one we we broke away from. Mat- matricide. Yeah, that's that's true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So <laughs> I shouldn't be invoking him today. Yeah. No, that's okay. that's okay. I think he might have. He'll be at the conference, by the yes, way. Yes, you gotta you gotta come see Joseph Pierce at the conference. We should mention the conference. <laughs> In the same chapter, um, Chesterton talks about the Declaration of Independence dogmatically bases all rights on the fact that God created all men equal, and it's right. For if they were not created equal, they certainly evolved unequal. There's no basis for democracy except in a dogma about the divine origin of man. (laughs) Now, Chester's a great defender of democracy. He's always talking about how that's his preferred form of government. But it's only based on the idea of the divine origin of man. Yep. Yeah. Well, yep. that's what we does... talked about yeah. with Joseph Pierce. Exactly yeah. right. And he's, it's, it comes from not only that divine idea, but I mean, it comes from Christianity, Judeo-Christian background, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and Chester, uh, a couple years later, after his um, conversion, he goes even farther in a in a. Oh, this is before his conversion. Yeah, yeah. this is actually right before his conversion wow. when he when he wrote this. Yes. Cool. Because um, he visited the year before he converted. Uh, right, uh, just a few years after his conversion, writing in a Catholic magazine, he says, the American Declaration of Independence is in its elements a very Catholic document. 
almost alone among the plans of modern institutions. It bases all government on the right of men to justice and all rights of men on the authority of God. Same thing, just pounds the idea. But again, justice is something that only comes from God. And, uh, you know, people all have this innate sense of, of justice. They all know when they've been treated unfairly. But where does that come from? And, and where does the government get the idea of, of justice? Chesterton says the American Declaration of Independence just says right out, it comes from God. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, as, as much as people try to erase that, that's right there in the Declaration. Yeah, and of course they try to erase Thomas Jefferson, the great author of this document that is you know truly our foundational document that we base mm-hmm. all of our rights on. They try to erase Thomas Jefferson, which, you know, kind of... Is wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, what else? Uh, what other quotes does Chesterton have about he, the great document? Yeah, you know, he de- he defends the Declaration of Independence to, to Englishmen, who I think he has a deeper appreci- appreciation of the Declaration <laughs> than than most Englishmen, and he says he always has to remind Englishmen, not only is it a a masterpiece, he he calls it a literary masterpiece, but it's also a historical fact. <laughs> because after all, that was the document that did create this bit of separation yeah. between America and England. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to ignore now. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, I think that's very funny. Yeah, you know, I had the great privilege of speaking at the House of Lords uh, in in two thousand two, and uh, I had to, uh, you know, make make reference to the the bit of unpleasantness between our countries uh, back in seventeen seventy six. They were very. Very welcoming. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, now it gets even more interesting. Uh, first of all, there's one very timely, or, or let's say, um, uh, his uh, timely relevant to the time that Chesterton yeah. lived. Mm-hmm. Okay, in, in 1921, what was going on in America? Can anybody remember what was happening in the 1920s in America? The prohibition. Prohibition. Good. First, <laughs> first guess gets yeah. it right. He says, your country began with the Declaration of Independence and ends with Prohibition. <laughs> and as I pass the Statue of Liberty, this is when he was sailing into the New York Harbor, I had the inclination to want to see all the liquor on board ship poured out in an act of pagan ob- oblation. <laughs> <laughs> Like the Boston Tea Party. Yeah, but. well, yeah, you know, because that, that's the the pagan right of sacrifice is to pour wine oh. out, an active oblation. He okay. says, yeah, that'd be, that's what we should do going going into uh, this this country where it's not even allowed to do something so basic as to drink. I know, yeah, liquor. yeah. He couldn't believe it. I know, and, and it's it's very funny how a hundred years later, exactly, uh, alcohol is not prohibited, but actually ne- necessary by the. The government. Yes. I mean, and it is true that, I mean, we needed to keep the liquor stores open uh, during COVID. Yep. Yeah. A lot of other places got shut down, but <laughs> not the liquor 100 stores, yeah. years after we shut down the liquor stores, we forced them to be open during the COVID shutdown. Yep. Couldn't mm-hmm. be more ironic. Then here's another one, though. What else was happening in the 1920s? Chesterton wrote a book on eugenics. It's the, you know, we're talking about the foundation of of birth control, uh, contraception, which would lead to abortion, uh, eugenics being pushed by Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. Who was targeting uh, people of color. People of color, She was targeting people. She wanted to put abortion clinics near black communities. Yeah, and all the ethnic people she didn't like, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And that's... It's interesting nowadays that Christians are known as... Well, they're, they're attacked for their... Their bigotry, quote unquote, bigotry, and not the um, the, the pro choice uh, group or right, community, right? Who uh, continue to uh, perform a genocide, right? Yeah. But here is what Chesterton c- connecting the two. This is even earlier, 1915. He writes this: Eugenics is chiefly a denial of the Declaration of Independence. It urges that so far from all men being born equal, numbers of them ought not to be born at all. Isn't that great? That was way better than what I was saying. <laughs> but I was trying to say that. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's usually the case, isn't it, with Chesterton, is yeah. that that's what we were trying to say, and then he <laughs> says it. He says it so much better. So much better. Um, I think I have one more great quote here from uh, from Chesterton on the uh, 
the Declaration of Independence. Okay. Um, again, get, well, he's, he's also talking about, um, you know, we, we've covered the fact that it's, it's divine rights to it. It's a, it's this foundational document for the, for the country, but, um, but it does represent an ideal as it were. And, and Chesterton, what he was so impressed about Americans, what, what struck him was that how idealistic Americans were. And he says, Americans are the most idealistic people in the world. Their only danger is that the idealist can easily become the idolater. And the American has become so idealistic that he even idolizes money <laughs> or idealizes money is what, you know, idealizing and idolizing, you know, those, th- those two things become, and so interesting. It's, it's funny. Cause that was the reputation that America had even back back then was that they just all worship money in America. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. I did not realize that. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you can see that nowadays <laughs> and there you go. Justin being the prophet. Yeah. A couple of his other uh, observations about Mer- uh, America before we uh, conclude our celebration here of the Fourth of July, uh, he he talks about this is this is really interesting. He talks about America is the last of the monarchies, a great Chestertonian paradox, right? Right. right. We're the ones who elect our president, but we treat our president like a king. And he says you have you are much more of a monarchy than Great Britain. Your president has almost complete authority and complete responsibility. He gets blamed for everything. <laughs> <laughs> this was in an interview in 1921 when he was here in America. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That was, that was great. Um, and I think uh, another interesting observation is, um, he says, the very largeness of America isolates and therefore imprisons them. Mm. For it is the large things that really limit us because they prevent us even from seeing anything beyond. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah you, would, you wouldn't think of, of the largest of America being a prison, but it's it's a very good observation. Yeah. That's why Chesterton is in favor of walls, even theoretic or uh, metaphorically, because it, they're the walls of a playground, if, yep. if they're the walls of a playground, yeah. The idea of localism is that there's limits. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, you know, he says the most important part of the, of the picture is the frame. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, we we work within our limitation. That's really cool. Well, it's nice to hear that Chesterton had a great appreciation for the Declaration, uh, more than most Englishmen, as you say, but probably more than a lot of Americans today. So indeed, indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, everyone, uh, have a very joyful Fourth of July and Independence Day, and sign up for the conference. Oh yeah, mention the conference. <laughs> By the way, Chesterton.org slash conference. Um, it's going to be really great. Uh, but yeah, and thank you for being with us. Until next time, help us to make uncommon sense more common.